Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday morning mountain weather update. To radar first, we'll do a little tour, but there's our storm system spinning across uh, the Intermountain West. You've got snow in Wyoming, Utah, and also Colorado. Let me show you what Utah looks like up close. So snow banked up against the uh, the Wasatch snowing through the high Uinta, snowing in southern Utahs uh, as well. And th this will continue most of today. You've also got snow up in Wyoming and snow in Colorado. And look at the snow here. As expected, you know, I mentioned yesterday the bulk of it would be across the western slope, and we're seeing that snowing hard through the West Elks, snowing down in the San Juan Mountains right now. In fact, here are a couple of cameras. So this is out of snow mass. You've got snow coming down. It's going to snow like this off and on most of today and maybe even into tomorrow. Um, in Crested Butte, similar scene. Everything is covered in snow there. You can you can see it. Uh, snow will continue in Crested Butte most of today and probably into tomorrow. I'll show you the time height forecast for humidity there in Crested Butte just a, in just a second. And here's Telluride. You've got good snow. Um, still falling down there. It, it will snow most of today and probably trickle into tomorrow as well. All right, let me give you the lay of the land. So this is the water vapor satellite imagery. Oranges and reds are drier air aloft. Your moisture is in your whites and your blues, and you can see the spin right here. There's our area of low pressure. It will track through Wyoming, kind of straddling the Colorado line, and then it eventually will exit. But it's moving slow enough that it will snow today and most of tomorrow across uh, Utah and also Colorado, especially Colorado. Um, and then behind it, you've got a large storm system right here. A piece of it will break off and sort of run across the northern tier very quickly. It's much weaker. But then the main part of this is going to go further to the south through the Sierra and become that southern track sort of cut off low that eventually sweeps back to the north. And at the same time, there's going to be a cold front that comes south. There's, so there's a lot of action here in the extended forecast. Here are my bullet points, and this is my timeline for best snowfall in all of these areas. So the Wasatch Range, um, snow today. And then another shot of snow, 11-3, 11-4, 11-5, 11-6. So kind of spread out. And, and that, that longer period of snow, 11-3 through 11-6, is really dependent upon the, that, that storm that comes out of the south and the cold front that comes into the north. How much phasing will there be? In the Teton, snow today, uh, pretty light. Another shot of snow, 11-1, 11-3, and then 11-5, 11-6. Colorado snow today, tomorrow, and then another shot of snow, 11-4 through 11-6. Tahoe could see some light snow today, and then potentially a little better shot of snow, late 11-1 into 11-2. Okay, here is that uh, time height forecast for Crested Butte Ski Area. Humidity in the atmosphere, this is a slice vertically through all the atmospheric layers. The timeline is at the bottom. You read it from right to left, so roughly for the next 72 hours. Deep column of moisture all the way from the top of the peaks uh, to like jet stream level um, there at Crested Butte. So good snow production today, this afternoon. And then the moisture gets a little bit shallower. It's not quite as deep, but it's still there on 1030 uh, most of the day, and then it fades on 1031, and drier air starts to sweep in. So. We've got good moisture remaining over the West Elks today and tonight, um, and that includes the San Juans as well. All right, let me show you the, the forecast jet stream. So by close of business today, um, there it is. So you've got the, there's your dip in the jet moving across Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, and also Colorado. Let me move this into the future. So here we are on 1030. Um, storm is still kind of lingering over Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, and then it moves away. Um, and then the second piece, you can almost see it moving into the Pacific Northwest. That slides very quickly across the northern tier, Pacific Northwest, BC, Idaho, Montana, and probably Wyoming. But then it moves away fast. Now on the back side, the third piece starts to dive to the south, all the way through the Sierra and all the way down to the Baja and the southern tier of states. And by 11-4, it's down there all alone. Now watch what happens. On 11-5, it moves up into Colorado, New Mexico, four corners, but at the same time, there's a cold front that's going to be dropping south from Canada. Now the last couple days, the real question has been, will these two pieces perfectly phase together? At today, they, they look like they're out of phase. It looks like the low is going to come out first, and the cold front will come in from behind it. Um, so not a perfect phase, but there will be some overlap. Um, by 11.6, you can see what's left of the trough. The energy comes in on the backside and recarves it. And there it sits in the four corners. 
so a little bit out of phase. Let me put some uh, moisture here. This is the forecast radar and satellite. So by 5.30 this afternoon, um, snow continuing over Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, and in Denver, um, here's what I see today. I see the potential for maybe a rain shower this afternoon north of Denver along I-25, and maybe a rain or snow shower or a few rain snow showers tomorrow, Wednesday, across Denver and most of I-25. Again, the emphasis in the storm track is not conducive to anything significant for Denver other than a few rain showers, a few rain or snow showers. I'm not expecting any accumulation in Denver, um, but there will be a pretty sizable temperature drop. What we would need is a better storm track through parts of southeast Colorado, and the storm track is way up near Wyoming. That's just too far to the north to benefit Denver in any significant way. Um, all right, so there we go by Wednesday in the morning and Wednesday in the afternoon. Again, snow continues uh, tomorrow across a lot of the mountain ranges of Colorado, and then eventually that storm moves away. Here comes that second piece of, of energy sliding across the northern tier of states, and it might brush northern Utah on its way through. Uh, and then it kind of fades, and then everything becomes all about that third piece diving down through the Sierra, down to the southern tier, and then eventually it starts to make its move back to the north. You can see the, the rain and snow intensifying across New Mexico, Colorado, the Four Corners. And look to the north, here comes that cold front that's going to sweep down from Canada. So the two are a little bit out of phase. The low is already starting to, it wants to move out of New Mexico and Colorado, but here comes the cold front um, behind it. So there's a little bit of phasing, but that's all new energy dropping in on 11-6, and that's a pretty sizable area of snow through Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico, and it continues, and if this plays out, this brings in a, quite a bit of colder air, and so we're going to get better snow production, and probably, if this happens, snow all the way down, accumulating snow into Denver and most of the front range of Colorado. And then one last slice here, that storm begins to slide south through 11.7 into New Mexico and southern Colorado. All right, as far as snow accumulation goes, here are my numbers. So all of today through tomorrow, this is our first storm system. So we've still got two or three inches left over for the Tetons and a bit more in the Wind Rivers and quite a bit more for Hagadon. Maybe another four or five inches to go for a lot of the Wasatch potentially six or more for the high Uintas. In Colorado, generally three to six across I-70 and north uh, of snow accumulation yet to go. Um, probably six to eight, somewhere right there over the highest of elevations of the, uh, the West Elks yet to fall. Um, down in the San Juans, potentially another six to 10 yet to go um, down there. All right, next time period. Again, anything in purple is a foot or more, and this is 1031 through 11.7. This accounts for the final two um, pieces of energy and maybe even the third with that cold front coming south, depending on how, how, how everything phases together. But potentially some significant snow in Colorado because you've got the low that comes out of the south, you've got the cold front that comes in, so we could be looking at quite a bit of snow with colder air and better snow production, a foot or more in a lot of locations in Colorado. Uh, potentially a foot up around the Tetons, seven to nine, seven to 10 in the Wasatch, and about seven to 10 there for the Sierra, and some light to moderate accumulations through uh, Northwest Montana, Idaho, and BC. So this is an exciting time period, because if we do indeed bring in that cold front with colder air, that's going to really help to crank out some better snow. And that's what I'm banking on right here with a lot of these numbers. All right, guys, so we'll go back to the first time frame. Here's 1029 today, basically all the way through tomorrow. And then here is that second time frame with even bigger numbers and more potential right there. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here on this Tuesday morning. I always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.